All right, I'm going to call the meeting to order for the Winchester Planning Board. It is 7.36 p.m. I'm Heather Von Maring. I am chair of the Planning Board. Welcome to everyone uh, from the public. With me, um, you just heard Brian Zakelli, that is the town planner. Along with, we have Deb Jurius, who is the vice chair of the Planning Board. We also have Maureen Meister, Cheryl Wolf, and Heather Hannon. We will also be joining with us this evening will be Mina, who is the town council and uh, engineering department members as well. Uh, Brian and Beth, I believe, might be joining us for that. Um, also, we are currently being recorded from WinCam. You can view this online. They will post this hereafter online. And also, it's being broadcasted uh, to the station as well. And so you will be recorded if you do speak during this meeting. We are going to move. Um, we have one and only agenda item this evening, um, which is 654 Main Street. Um, and then uh, any new business if something has happened um, since we last met that just, um, since we posted actually, not since we last met, since we posted to see if there's any new, any new business. Um, since it's 737 and it's past the time, I'm going to open um, the hearing, public hearing for the Winchester Planning Board. Um, typically, if we were in person, we'd be asking you to sign in, but since we are on Zoom and remote, uh, as you have signed in on Zoom is what the name is that will be registered uh, for your sign in. Um, as since I just opened the hearing as part of our procedures, I do have to repeat again that we are being recorded and that we're being recorded for the benefit of those who have come for the hearing. Um, I already introduced all the members of the planning board and the town planner. Um, but members of the planning board, when you speak hereafter, if you could say your name um, so people recognize who is speaking and with the voices. We have gone through all of our procedures and we are currently sitting at number eight, which is our board discussion. However, since we have last met, we have received some additional communication. Um, Brian, did you want to go over any of the communication? I know today we received um, something from housing. Did you want to put any of those into record? Um, yeah, that's what I was thinking I was do is um, go over the current uh, draft list um, of conditions that we've built so far, uh, and including the one that was today from uh, John Servier of the Housing uh, Partnership Board. So give me just a minute. So today the planning board received communication from John Servier uh, with proposed approval conditions for 654 Main Street. The planning board has not discussed these, um, but will discuss them um, as part of this evening. All right, so I'm just gonna try to um, quickly do a recap, uh, setting up um, us to continue going through the site plan and special permit uh, review criteria. So the parts that are highlighted um, were uh, reflect what happened at our last meeting, showing that a final landscaping plan shall be reviewed and approved by the town. And by the town here, we mean uh, engineering, de uh, uh, engineering department, plan um, engineering department, department of public works, the select board, planning board, anyone who would need to have their jurisdiction uh, is related to when we say the word town. Um, uh, so this number six, uh, this is the portion that was given to us today by John Serbier. Um, So this is it in its entirety. Um, everything uh, in the top portion here, uh, starting with six affordable units to 80% of AMI, uh, is almost everything, or it's nearly identical to, to what we've seen before. And then the additions um, are below um, with the... Um, D, uh, that it has to be in correspondence with the DHCD's regulations for the local action units and actually uh, going through uh, the um, regulatory authority and the, the right processes for that. Um, again, DHCD must approve the size and interior and their exterior finishes. So the only thing that was really kind of up for discussion in terms of something that was new was whether or not um, the 20th market rate unit um, uh, and whether or not it would be some type of sliding scale. Uh, I think Diab Jarius uh, probably has the best handle of that as he was uh, with the Housing Partnership Board. Uh, so that's something that we could talk about there. 
Um, I don't know if now is the right time to talk about that, so I'm going to keep moving. Um, uh, related to 63 Vine Street, it really should be um, before it was to the satisfaction of SSV, but it's really any, anything here should really be to the satisfaction of the town and the planning board. It should not be to the satisfaction of consultants because it's it, if we're not satisfied, that, that that's what matters. Um, so uh, no changes obviously here. Um, this was based upon a comment from our last meeting in terms of the window sashes in the rear of the building that should be consistent with the front facade. So that was the only change to the conditions there. Um, all these have been in since the original submission um, since we've seen in uh, September, since September 8th. So those are all the same. Um, we talked about giving the order of conditions uh, essentially to that it needs to be obtained before any construction may commence. Um, and we're really kind of relying on the Conservation Commission's order of conditions. That's not new. It's just um, saying that it may not commence until it's obtained. Um, this now reflects the uh, number 10 now reflects uh, the engineering department's um, memo and then a response letter from the applicant is also attached and um, they have said there, there are no issues. They have either agreed to everything in the engineering department's uh, letter um, or they will do what, she, um, what the engineer asks. Um, you're more than welcome to ask the town engineer if she has any further questions with that. Um, and then uh, all utilities, mechanicals and associated screening if necessary shall be shown on a roof plan. Um, that was, these are all comments that were incorporated from our, from our last meeting. Um, talking about the audible warnings um, of the uh, garage number 15. So these uh, exiting, this is from Tool and then talked about by members of the Housing Partnership Board, saying that such warnings should not be audible in the units. The, the actual final language of this is probably difficult, but the, what we were trying to get the intent here was that if there was very loud beeping right next to units, whether they're affordable or not, this is, you know, might not be so equitable. Um, the other thing we, we that uh, the board uh, highlighted number 16 was associated parking shall stay with the unit but maybe rented out to anyone so not completely unbundled but uh but maybe rented out to the uh, from uh from the owner um number 19 talks about the the brick ban and associated concrete sidewalk to be continued uh, how it is on 36 to 40 elmwood to continue around to 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 uh, the project site and that applicants are to work with the town and the westerly neighbor to screen or landscape the area southeast of 51 Vine Street. So that's everything where we are right now. We're gonna go um, right into uh, the uh, where we left off, um, but that's up to you, Heather, if you wanted to um, go in a different direction. Um, Maureen, I have a question. I thought there was a discussion about the uh, doing a bump out at um, Elmwood. And even though we know it doesn't, go anywhere except to a driveway right now, but that was a recommendation and I thought we accepted that. The bump out on Elmwood, Main at Elmwood. On Elmwood, it's in the plan or are you talking about for a crosswalk? For a crosswalk, sorry, thank you. Okay, so the crosswalk to cross over Elmwood the crosswalk, um, it was actually from, not from um, Tool, it was from Dennis, and I thought we were receptive to the idea that eventually a crosswalk there uh, could work well with new with a redevelopment, so I don't know with that. I, 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 re I do remember what happened there. Um, so um, we talked with Tool, and Dennis can also jump in and agree that we decided to abandon that idea due to the future um, potential I improvements along um, Main Street and that a bump out would, would be um, from uh, that would not be a good idea. Den Dennis, I believe you agreed. Uh, well, with we that. don't need more discussion. If it's out, it's out. I don't want to. It's out. Sure. Fine. It's out. Maureen, it is out. Left it, actually, how I remember it, and we can talk about it, is that yes, right now you can't do the crosswalk because it goes right into yeah. the driveways of the gas yeah, station. No, we understand. Mm -hmm. But what we did say, and we could do, is say, and and Mina might be able to correct me, is that we could say that a crosswalk at the corner of Elmwood and Main to cross over Main pending future development should be allowed or, um, you know, that. But there's nothing in this project which would preclude that. So do we really need that as a condition? It'd be changing their work thereafter because they're doing all the brickwork and stuff at that 
where we would be cutting into it. I don't, I, it would be us doing it because we take over ownership of it after they do it, the sidewalk. Right. Couldn't so, they just do the curb cut so that it would be there later? Like the ramp? This is Beth, you, you can't put in um, a curb cut that doesn't have a matching curb cut on the other side of the street. Okay. I think the condition, Heather, that you're looking for would be something along the lines of making that they would design that portion uh, of their site in a way that permits putting a crosswalk in that location. And we can we can add more to that language, but basically they have to work with the town engineer to make sure that what they build in that exact spot is makes it possible for Beth and her team to design a crosswalk there in the future. Okay, yep. Maureen, does that sound good? Yes, thank you. Okay, so we'll add that in. Um, so going back, um, when we'll do housing before we conclude. Sound good? We'll go back to the where we left off in our last um, meeting, which was looking at the criteria and going through and analyzing it um, thereafter. So Brian, do you want to pull up the criteria? So everybody's seeing 942? Yes. Okay. So Heather, this is what you're talking about? Yep. Um, so community needs, um, commercial, there's, well, actually maybe now is a good point because part of the community needs is the affordable housing component of it. Um, and there is the criteria to lock in that housing, which was recommended. So maybe real quickly, just to grab back to the housing partnership and let's take care of this right now members of the planning board to review John's recommendations. Dieb, you had um, some input on this. You are, you sit actually on housing. So did you have any recommendations or thoughts on what John Sabir is recommending on behalf of housing for the condition? Um, I think that they're all, most, um, John will hopefully correct me if I'm wrong. Uh, all of these things have pretty much been agreed to by the, um, by the um, developer by the proponent. Um, so we're, could you switch, switch back to that, please, Brian, the condition? So it's essentially listing out what we've already, what's already been agreed to. Um, so we've got four two bedroom units, two one bedroom, they're split between 80 to 100. I won't read it all. So I think this is all pretty much what we've already um, have seen before. Uh, they have to meet the DHCD's requirements. The DHCD requirements require that the um, Winchester Housing Partnership Board Chair sign off on them. And so we, we still have, so that keeps them in the loop, which is a good thing. Um, I think the big question or the, the remaining question is down at that highlighted 20th market rate unit. And that is at what point um, should those units be available? Um, obviously we don't want them to be the last things that are produced out of this project. So the only question is at what point do we require them to be uh, available to be put on the market? So um, 20th is um, it's a little more than, I don't know, what is 20 divided by 36? Uh, let me do that in my we'll calculator. Yeah. I'm sorry. 18 is halfway. So you're just, just past halfway, basically. Yeah, just past halfway. So, I mean, also we could, we could, if that's acceptable to the board, or we could say maybe for the, the, the units which go for the um, up to 80% might go earlier. It's just um, the housing partnership board has 20 is, is their number. Um, I don't, it's just, that's the only question I have about this. And I can be more coherent if you ask me again. As uh, did, did John speak to the development team about this 20th? I do not know the answer to that. John, are you here? Can you unmute yourself? It does not appear to be here. Okay. Uh, uh, to the application team, who is the 20th market rate 
work with your financial? It seems reasonable, but I want to double check. Uh, that's fine with us. Okay, thank you. Thank you. That was Ian Gillespie. Yep, yeah, thanks, Ian. Members of the board, any questions? At halfway through, they need to complete and provide occupancy for the six units? No. All right, I'll take silence as that's acceptable to you. We'll move on. So um, that is one of the community needs that um, this project addresses. And so I think that is reasonable myself. Um, and with no um, criticism of that, we'll go back into where we left off, um, which we were coming into uh, four. So number four is impacts on the neighborhood character, including the extent to which building forms and materials are compatible with the prevailing scale and character of buildings in the neighborhood. So this has been a, a topic that um, a lot of the neighbors have been bringing up. And I'll just dive right in since I always make all of you go first. Um, so with the building forms, there the building is coming in. Um, Brian, if you want to pull in an elevation. Yep, I get that up. So this project is coming in at four stories. To the left, you have the one story liquor store and to the next is the historical building, which is three stories. So it is one story above what the historical building is. When the zoning was created, that historical building was discussed and it was in included in part of presentation at town meeting that they could add an extra story on it. So that could go up to four stories. That was when they changed the original zoning to the center business district as it is now. When you look at the building next to it, it's three and a half stories. So you're only going half a story up. The one to the right, um, that's three and a half stories is 45 feet. It's not much of a difference in height because of the way the roof is drawn, which is flat. It mimics the flat also of the historical building as it is right now. There are flat roofs in this area. And so when I look at it, I know that um, you feel that it is out of scale, but it is also not a single family house. So it is going to feel that way because it is not that way. It is not a single family house. But as it is, and as it's written by the zoning, which town meeting went to, um, which the planning board went to town meeting this past and showed this, they went and said, no, they like the height as it is in the zoning and they feel it's appropriate. So based on a lot of that, that is where the, the building form and materials and the scale and the massing of this building are in compliance with the zoning. Um, I do appreciate the back, how they are using the historical building and they are stepping down from the four story to a three and a half story. Dennis Carlone has discussed this as well. So they're bringing it down to the three and a half within the historical house, which is two stories and then going into the neighborhood. When you go into the back, um, you have the three and a half. By right, all the houses on Vine can go up to 40 feet. So we are within that, we are within that, um, within the massing of stepping down towards Vine as it's supposed to be. And it's also the height is in line with what is on Main Street. So from my perspective, it does meet this criteria. It's just, it's different. And I know that as neighbors of buildings, it's different when you have change, but this change just fits in the scale of the massing uh, from my perspective. Members of the planning board, your perspective and your opinion? So we're not looking in the CVD regs and that's where I was focusing. And I started with the design review guidelines and these also of course were voted and adopted by town meeting. And it begins um, in the design review guidelines, the opening, which is 7.3.17.1, that finally each individual project should be carefully conceived and executed to the mutual benefit of its immediate neighbors. 
And one purpose of a hearing, the word hear is part of it, is to hear from everyone. And the, certainly the immediate neighbors were not heard from. And from what I can gather, they were not even aware that all this pretty considerably um, influential zoning um, was being presented to them. So there's the issue of, is this really going to be for the mutual benefit of the neighbors? And that's pretty major. But I wanna back up and say to the board, there's a very different perspective we could take on this. And that's a question of, is there any way to approve this project, okay? Can we approve this project in some way that would satisfy the neighbors, and let's emphasize this, and avoid an appeal? We know that there are multiple projects in this town that have gone into appeal, whether it's Cambridge Street or whether it's across from the grocery store, and then nobody, it, there's just no movement. And at that point, nobody's really better off. So the question is, can this project go forward in a way that would be um, modified in some respect that gives the, um, I guess you'd say sufficient um, profit, because that's all this it really is, it's all about for the proponent, sufficient pro profit, give the um, owner who's wanting to sell, give the um, benefits to those people, but also that also uh, that pulls back on this in some way um, for the mutual benefit of the um, immediate neighbors. So in my view, the, um, prod the building, I would also go to elements of form. And again, this is in the zoning. Um, so it was certainly approved by town meeting. Um, the and I contemplated this, the um, elements of form included that we're supposed to be minimizing in terms of height, the visual dominance. And I just don't see that. Now that may, obviously it requires judgment but I don't see that this um, has minimized the visual dominance. It's still a very dominant um, building. And frankly, uh, we got, a, I thought a very thoughtful e, um, uh, summary of the whole project from Sally Dale. And she describes how this facade of the building looms disproportionately over Main Street. I agree with her. And I think a lot of people who see this also um, have that view. So it's, uh, this thing's gonna be around forever. Um, it's going to be condos. So it's never going to go away. And um, I do want to go to one elevation. Heather, you obviously were setting this up with Brian. I want to ask for a different elevation. And the elevation would be, um, you've got choices here. It might be page C2.1, uh, I'm sorry, A204. A204, it's the Main Street elevation. Because the perspectives, of course, distort. And I would suggest to the next planning board that we think about getting at least a request for um, elevations. We did get them with this project. So it's A204. Yeah, uh, I'm getting there. Uh, just no problem. Yeah, just to be clear, uh, we just said make sure we have all the plans there. There was certainly no uh, 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 plan to look at specific elevations of, uh, of any kind. Yeah, but um, we, yeah okay. I, I'm sorry, do, could you tell me the name of the page again? It's page A204. Thank you. Yeah, it's after plans. It doesn't, yeah, it doesn't seem. You'll find it. Oh. It's all C6 details. Okay, after that. Okay. Over there. It's getting warm. But yeah, no, it's a little lag, but I'm here now. Okay, it's on my screen now, but uh, there might be a little lag for you. It, it is the lag, yeah, I, I'm looking at the house. Can others see A204? Yes. Oh, really? It's slow for me. There we go. Finally, there we are. That to me is the, probably the most important image because then you see what's um, the existing um, commercial block to the left. And boy, it's sort of buried with the trees. Is that the same one? Because I thought I could see it better. Maybe I can in my own print, but you can see the ba uh, building to the right. So this is actually much bigger. And I'll go back that I do think um, it, if we were to go back to the three and a half stories, 
uh, that certainly goes with silhouette, which again is in the zoning bylaw, and that buildings must provide animated silhouettes that enliven views. Um, the, um, sorry about that. The big one was, oh, I know. Um, as ne nearly all Winchester architectural icons have slanted roofs, the town prefers to keep this architectural detail for any new additions or constructions. And I think that would help a lot. So I just think um, looking at the massing of this building, three and a half would at least uh, get us closer to the scale of what's on the south, which is to the left in this elevation, and to the north, which is to the right. So this establishes a very different um, scale. But I'm also, now that we've got the elevations, um, also concerned about what this does from the other sides. It's still very large. I think it, it can be um, got brought down uh, to maintain, you know, I could go back. There are other parts about this, about the whole purpose here. Town meeting heard that too. And, you know, you hear these um, very general things about what we're maintaining in terms of the village character and so on of the town. This isn't, this is urban. Um, it, it's urban. There's no way around it. Uh, so, yeah, there was a lot said to town meeting, but at this point, it's a hearing. And we do have, uh, the abutters have rights. They can take this into court and see what they think. Um, but it won't, if it goes into court, it's not going anywhere. So I do think that uh, expecting some or requesting some or even conditioning, I'm not sure, but getting to get the scale down, um, mass, in this case, I'm talking about massing, um, would still um, get us closer to what we want for the town um, as well as for the abutters. So um, anyway, I, I really appreciated all the comments we've gotten other people who certainly have design um, expertise and sensitivity to the site, and they saw it as large. So I think we ought to take that into account as this is the purpose of the hearing. Other members of the board? Um, yeah, I would, if, if it's okay, I'd like to go next. This is Dia Jurius. Um, so I have, a, I have a lot of general comments that I'll say at some other point, but if we're just going to focus on um, impact on neighborhood character. Um, so we've had, the neighbors have been very consistent and vocal over not just this project, over the last year and a half of this project, but also the previous project that was for this site. So um, I think we have heard quite a bit and I think, um, which is good. I'm glad that they were able to, to provide that input. I wanna go back to what the current zoning is for this parcel. And the CBD in this particular zone is 45 feet by right, 65 feet with a special permit and 66 feet with a parking special permit. So by right, there could be a three-story building on this site. When that story building could be 45 feet, which is only about eight feet shorter than the existing building. So regardless of whether it's 45 feet or 53 feet, this is going to be a building which will affect the neighborhood. Um, I don't know, the, the key question before us, I believe, is what that difference is between what a buy right building will do to the neighborhood and what this building, which was brought in under special permit would do. Regardless, a three-story building sitting on Main Street will affect views from Vine Street. There's no way around that. It's going to affect the feel of the neighborhood on Vine Street. I mean, just a buy right building will change things. And I know a number of, of, of the neighbors have, have concerns about view and traffic and things like that. But the key question here is, what is the difference between a buy right building and a special permit building? So we're talking about eight feet in difference. And let's talk about why they can bring in a higher height. And that's because they are putting, you can call for a higher height if you're putting parking inside the building. And that was one of the reasons for putting that in there was to encourage developers to 
conceal the parking inside the building and therefore give them the extra room. So the developer is not coming in here and saying something outrageous. In a sense, they're following exactly what the, the, the CBD zoning regulations have called for, which is bury the parking in the building and we'll give you extra height to make up for that. And so in that sense, what they're doing is reasonable. We've asked them to do that. So I, I, I find it, you know, I understand the concerns of the neighborhood, but the real question is, are they doing something extraordinarily out of whack with what this CBD zoning is saying is possible? And I don't think they are. The other neighborhoods we have to think about, I mean, there are three neighborhoods we have to think about. There's the Main Street neighborhood, there's the Vine Street neighborhood, and there's the Elmwood neighborhood. I think that from my point of view, the transition from Main Street to Elmwood, I think is very successful. It brings in buildings which are at the same scale as the other property on Elmwood right next door. I mean, don't forget also that the, the building uh, which currently houses the liquor store will eventually get redeveloped and that will send, that will probably be another three story building. I mean, they can do that by right. So they could go in and do that by right if they wanted to. So is this out of scale with that neighborhood? I don't think so, not on the Elmwood side. I think it's okay on Main Street, certainly the zoning gives the flexibility to go there and they're not going to the 66 feet, which is they could have done. And they did actually bring the roof down. It was taller before they didn't have a flat roof. So they have brought the root down and it's, as I said before, only eight feet, they're asking for an eight foot exceedance of what's by right. And uh, as Brian has pointed out, and I think engineering has pointed out, this is in the floodplain. So it actually requires the first store story to be about, the retail has to be, as I calculated, three foot, 10 inch, almost four feet above Main Street. So you can question, you know, so there, that's losing some usable height, if you want. On Vine Street, this is a concern. They are certainly going to be impacted by a large building. Um, they would be impacted by a, a, a by right three foot, or three-story building. Are they impacted less by this is the question, or more by this is the question. So if this were a by right structure and it was let three feet, they could actually eventually, I mean, one of the things that was very important was to retain that historical home. And by doing that, they've given up some patch of land. Now, granted, they're looking for a fairly large FAR, but they're actually giving up that patch of land which the house sits on. And the, in a sense, that's good because having the house there means that the neighbor at 51 Vine does not have a three-story building right next to them. But it does, so there is a transition from this building up into the neighborhood because of the existence of that historical home. The only question I have is, does the eight foot excess in height, is that a significant difference over a three-story building, and I don't think it is. So I think it's in scale. I think it's appropriate for the site. I think it integrates into the neighborhoods well. If this were a by right building, I don't know that it would integrate any better just because of the size of the building that's allowed by right. And um, that's where I stand on that one. Thank you. Thank you, Dia. Heather or Cheryl? I can go. This is Heather. Um, I agree with a lot of what was said, so I'll try not to repeat that part. Um, I do wish that the neighbors liked the building more. Um, I think that is unfortunate that we've heard a lot of um, uh, concerns from them. But to some of the points that were already made, I'm not sure that they would be happy with something that was done by right either. And um, I do think that it goes with the zoning and I think it fits into the urban context, given that it is on Main Street and that it, um, you know, some of the other buildings that are around there. Um, the houses on Vine, you know, are the smallest neighbors, but um, they are next to a different, 
a different zone. So I think that's just going to always be a problem or an issue for neighbors that want those properties to be smaller scale. Um, I do think it would look better if it had a sloped fourth floor. I think Maureen mentioned that. I think it would make it not seem so harsh, but I do like the design. Um, and I think that keeping the historic house helps um, with one of some of the scale. Cheryl? Yep, <clears throat> excuse me. Um, all very good points and um, like Heather, I'll try to not repeat things. Um, I think when I first saw this design and approach, um, my, my thought about going up Vine Street and arriving at a residential, um, you know, home scale um, at the top of the hill made, made complete sense to me that in fact, it's kind of, you know, because it's not far off of Main Street, Main Street has its presence as a commercial environment and being able to drive up a hill and live at the top of a hill in, in a housing environment, um, just there's just sort of a natural flow to that. Um, I think that we need a commercial corridor in Winchester. Um, as opposed to, um, you know, gas stations and, um, you know, uh, banks. And I think that we've all been really excited about this design because it will relocate the hardware store into um, a building that is actually been really beautifully designed. And I think, um, I do feel um, for the the family that has spoken out many times um, that is the closest um, to, to the new building, um, exactly um, 51 Vine, I guess. Um, so I, I'm really hopeful that the developer will um, really consider very thoughtfully the the screening and um, the landscaping that um, abuts her property and and her home, um, but I think that this is this is a development that is going to move Main Street forward, and you know the the goals of the town to provide um, a more vibrant um, city center or town center. Um, so I'm hoping that um, that people can see see that in in the project. I do want to point out there are just two more things here. I got out my um, CBD regs, uh, the regulations, and how it's. I mean, this really is not what I would expect it to be delivered um, in front of us on the screen. When I see the regs and silhouette top floor is buildings increase in height above two to three stories, they should be shaped to be increasingly slender and broken down in scale toward the top. Well, that's not, yeah, it's on page 18. If you're going down, Brian, thanks for bringing it up. And there's the height there too. It just, this isn't, um, this isn't what's in there. We and we worked on these these um, regulations for quite a while. It was another year afterwards. So that's the part I was looking reading out loud. But this didn't. This hasn't delivered. And um, I think this was part of the expectation was that that top floor would be scaled back. And it's quite explicit. So I mean, tell us who's promising what or saying what. This isn't it. Um, Dennis, did you talk to them about sloping the top story? Uh, <clears throat> thank you uh, for asking. Yes, we've talked about this. In fact, we had a slanted roof on top of the four stories at one time. Um, and I, I think it does make sense 
to articulate the roof as one goes up vine or, or facing the ast older historic houses and as well as uh, Elmwood. Um, and I actually think if it was all the same, it would not be as rich of a project. I get what everybody's saying. And I wrote the guidelines, um, but the guidelines are to be taken in hand with zoning, with getting the right number of units to make the project go. You can question that, I guess. Um, and I don't think the building should be the same going all around. I feel pretty strongly about that, that facing Main Street is different than facing wooden houses. Well, I think we could agree with that. I'm sorry, this is the time when we're really now having a dialogue with you, because I would have hoped it would go back and forth that you met with um, Mr. Talukian, and then we would say what we're looking for. And it feels like we're very um, late in the game here, having that dialogue. But you're you were talking with him and trying to meet um, your own ideas about the guidelines. And certainly, I know you wrote them, but of course, we all had input and we all agreed to them. So I'm still feeling like this. And I agree with you. They should not be. It should not. This what we call commercial block should not be the same as the. Um, uh, the strictly residential block. I like the differentiation because it's very large. The, this is a big mass and breaking it into two, I guess you could call styles. That makes sense. But even so, um, that front block is really big. It's bigger than anything on Main Street. And what a shock this is going to be to the rest of Winchester. Most of who, uh, we have no newspaper coverage anymore. Um, it's not like Cambridge. We have no newspaper coverage. Most people don't know what's going on here. And this is substantially larger and more looming than anything else that's, um, that's ever been built in this quarter. So May I respond, Madam Chair? Yep, go ahead. Um, anything would be bigger than what's on Main Street. One of the weaknesses of downtown is the one story gas structure, gas station character of Main Street. It's desolate largely desolate or from a massing point of view. And it's not going to be a three-story massing typically. Uh, you know, if all the buildings around this were three stories, then I think you'd have a case to make, but that is not what it is. This is in the valley compared to Vine Street. And my own feeling is, and I, I've mentioned this to the to the board, I had a bigger building here. I had uh, four stories where the gas station is. Uh, across the street, I'm sorry, where the liquor store is, I had four stories. I had a slanted roof on top because it's next to an historic structure. Across the street where the gas station is recessed in front of an open space, I had six stories. We were asked to get around 200 to 240 units downtown. And that became part of the problem. Now you could look at any guideline by itself and say, you're not doing enough, but the guidelines have to be looked at combined with the zoning. And does it mitigate the height going back? Absolutely it does. Does it do it enough for some uh, neighbors? No, I get that. Anything you build, as Diab mentioned, would not be satisfactory to people in single houses or two family houses. Well, I think right now I'm looking at this from the perspective of the whole town. And I think- I am that, too. Well, I think the elevation is um, it's sheer, let's try that word for um, uh, it just it's, it's a very vertical building. Um, and I would have expected given having, yes, there was a draft, but it's the board that now has the guidelines and approved and adopted the guidelines. I would not have expected such a sheer blocky um, facade on Main Street. So 
I think um, I also, I mean, we could go back over history. I don't think that's relevant right now because this is the, um, these are the regulations and this is the zoning. And we're supposed to be um, looking at this from the perspective of what's written at this stage. I, I agree. And the board will make that vote. Uh, I'm just representing what, why I came to where we are as a consultant, I'm only right, right, right. But now it's just this Please is a dialogue. So now you're hearing, and we've heard from the wait, wait, wait. Um, Can I say something? Community, please? yeah. Um, we've been having a dialogue for the last year on this project. I don't think that one can state that this is the beginning of a dialogue on whether or not that top floor should be four or three and a half. I, I really find that an inaccurate portrayal of what's been going on. This project and Dennis have been before this board multiple times, at which point anyone could have said, I find four stories completely unacceptable. You must bring it down to three and a half or else I will not approve of it. Well, in that fact, chance, can that I respond chance, to that? I'm can sorry. I say something in response? Can I finish? Wait, can, do you have finish first, Heather? And oh, I thought you were done. No, so I just want to point out that this, this, we have had multiple opportunities. This particular flat roof design has been before us for months. And I have never got a sense from the board, and maybe I'm just not paying attention, that, that this was a game changer, that this would prevent it from going forward. Because I never heard anyone really put their foot down. Oh, it's and, actually in the minutes? And I did state something and it was in November. In fact, the minutes we just approved and it was recorded. And I asked specifically about three and a half stories, but there was no opportunity for dialogue. So it was a statement and it just sat there last November. It's in the minutes. Okay, Maureen, Heather? Yeah, so um, I'm fine with it going as it is. I was just saying that I think that um, a sloped fourth floor would help with some of the issues we're having about scale. Um, but to Dieb's point, I do feel like we are just now talking as a board about this project. We have had so many meetings about this project, but it was always my impression that we were there to listen to the public or to listen to Dennis or to listen to other consultants. And in none of those meetings did I feel like we were told that was time for us to discuss as a board. I thought it was the board will talk later. The board will talk after we've heard from everyone. And I thought that Heather kept saying, does anyone have a clarifying question? And if I didn't have a clarifying question, it wasn't the time to give an opinion because we weren't done hearing from everyone. So I agree with Maureen in terms of this feeling very late for us to have a discussion. And I didn't think that that opportunity had been there in previous meetings. Well, um, okay, I can appreciate that. But we discussed about we discussed balconies, we discussed transitions, we discussed um, whether or not the the dormers or whatever you call them are coming out at the right angle on the sides. We discussed so many. We discussed positioning of balconies relative to windows and made sure they were all straight up and down. We had input on so many different parts of this project. So I am, you know, obviously I felt differently, but we've seen this design evolve and we've had input at all of these stages. And I, I apparently I have a different perspective on what we were doing. I never felt personally that I needed to hold off on discussions on design. Because I thought we did that. I'm oh, sorry. I thought we did it early on, but then not in quite a while. Um, well, the discussion happened um, pre-application, but once they file the hearing, we have to go by the hearing procedures. And the hearing procedures I followed to a T, which in the hearing procedures says the board does not discuss until this point. That's correct. So, yeah, yeah. Right. So I just want to be clear. It wasn't me trying to stop. I just followed the procedure. No. As I didn't very clearly. I didn't think you were keeping us from discussion. I was just arguing what Dieb was saying is that this is late to have a discussion. And I'm just saying this is when I thought we were going to have the discussion. Okay. Um, uh, Heather, yeah. yep, may, I, may I just weigh in? I, I just, I want to be um, partly because 
you know, the, one of the issues that came up was a potential for appeal. And obviously, you know, there, there's no guarantee, no matter what you do, an appeal doesn't come. But in terms of the process, that's what's important. I want to just reiterate a few points. Obviously, I, I am not the, neither the designer nor, nor a Winchester resident. I, I apparently live in the overly urbane, like Mr. Carlone, city of Cambridge. Uh, but we, you know, what I would say is this, um, Dennis is correct in how one approaches this um, project, uh, any project. You, the design guidelines there's a, are relevant, certainly. They are labeled as guidelines, but there are, it is also important to consider it in light of the zoning. You have a set of criteria, and I think you know, you've started this meeting going through the criteria one by one and noting what is meeting the standards for you. And you know, to um, Maureen's point, it, it, it may be the case that one or more members don't agree with that every standard is met. That's why there's multi-member boards um, and that's fine. But at the end of the day, it's whether those, those standards are met, the design guidelines are there to allow the applicant and the board to understand what they might be looking for in the design guidelines, but they're not the end all and be all, especially with respect to massing and height, because there are as of right heights, there are other zoning factors there. So that's sort of just one point in terms of how to think about this. I would try to stay rigorously tied to the standards you're now looking at one by one. And I also just, you know, for the sake of a clear record, I, I, I know I was not at every hearing uh, night, but from my understanding, and Brian, please correct me if I'm wrong, this is a project that was subject, first of all, you had a design consultant, which is certainly not it's not unusual, but not every project in, in a suburban um, town center has a design consultant. And I, I have to say, I it is Dennis's input was more detailed than I think I have heard on projects of this size in, in many communities. And it's not to say that, and certainly seem to touch on all of the factors that are before you. You have- oh, Thank you, I would like- Maureen, to Maureen, I'm still talking, before. excuse me. You're not recognized by the chair. You don't get to talk. That's I'm really frustrated. For, Maureen you, Meister, Miss Meister, you do not story. get to I'll jump in before. until I'm done. Heather, I will not, no, I'm not, board. you're not gonna cut me off because you have a different opinion. I will finish and then the chair will recognize you. That is how hearings work. They are not arguments. They are not discussions. They are led by the chair. I have the floor, you do not. Please let me finish. Please finish, Mina. I'm in the middle of giving you what the, the full advice here. You mentioned an appeal. You incorrectly mentioned that there was not opportunity for notice to abutters. That's incorrect. As a, as a person who may have to defend the town here, it is incorrect that there was not notice to abutters. There was plenty of notice to abutters. I, and from what I understand, abutters were allowed to speak, provided comments. You referenced their comments. There is no legal standard that would say there is no notice if somebody doesn't get everything that they want. I'm not debating that they, that somebody might be upset or not. But the point is there was notice, there were multiple hearings and you had a design consultant. I just wanna make sure that's clear in the record. And the task before you is to go through the standards. I am sorry for losing my cool, but I would respectfully ask that the chair be permitted to run the meeting person by person calling on people. That is the only way you can have a, a decision that will make sense to a court if it is appealed later. You cannot just jump in and start talking over each other. Thank you, Mina. My hand is raised. Maureen? Well, two things. I didn't say anything about the notice to abutters. That was done, no question. So for the record, um, we certainly noticed the abutters. What I was referring to was the fact that the uh, we have no newspaper of any real um, note in the town covering this, um, this whole, all these proceedings. So most people in Winchester have no idea what's going on because unfortunately uh, the weekly paper we once had that most people read has not been sending a reporter. So this is totally on, um, just out of the, um, what uh, the people in the community mostly are not aware of what's happening. So that's, uh, that's a, an important distinction. And I certainly didn't misrepresent or say anything that was inaccurate on that topic. Um, but I do wanna go back to the zoning since um, we're being urged to look more um, specifically at the zoning. Of course, the um, regulations simply expand on the zoning. 
So I want to return to the massing. Um, it's, it's part of the elements of form. If we can go back to that, Brian. Um, it's uh, 7-24 or in the um, elements of form 7.3.17.4. Oops, we're in the totally wrong. Yep, 7.3.17.4. Well, it doesn't, uh, you're, you're talking about, oh, sorry. Uh, oh, the form? Yep. 7.3.17.4 in the yeah, zone. Okay, in, you're, you're in, now in the guideline, uh, whatever. For, for, the yeah. regulations. Regulations actually hold some weight. Okay, you know, so you okay. You're saying the regulation, but now you're saying the zoning. It's seven point three point seventeen point four in the zoning, correct? Correct. Yes. Thank you. Okay, it's on my screen. Okay. Um, I don't have. Yeah, there we go. So one of them, of course, is height, and that height and bulk of buildings should be configured to. Oops, it's moving to minimize their visual dominance, and that would be one of the um, one of the issues that I think we ought to really think about, and especially um, bordering neighborhoods and adjacent newer planned development. So that's part of the. What is what does that mean? And that's of course what the um, the regulations expand on, and then the um, then we go to scale. And the um, sense of intimacy, this really doesn't make us, there's, I don't see that at all. Um, and then I'll go back to massing, which is really the, for me, the most important thing about how that roof line looks, um, whether it's on Main Street or heading up um, on Elmwood. But the um, massing here is, um, it's uh, at the end of the first paragraph. Uh, let's see, in, and to break down any building types, typical massing to relate to the historic character and mass of Winchester CBD and to avoid a monolithic appearance. And that to me is part of what I find um, concerning and I appreciate Heather Hannon's comments that this really does have this very large, it's really large blocky appearance. Um, I just didn't expect to, uh, that when this was passed, this zoning was passed, uh, that we would see a building this large monolithic and blocky um, to me, the scale is off, the, um, the massing doesn't do it. And then if you scroll down to silhouette, maybe I have a lag, I don't know. Yep, and there we are. And that to me is also, as buildings increase in height, they should be shaped to increasing to be increasingly slender and broken down in scale toward their top. I want to remind everybody what we ended up with over on uh, northern um, part of Main Street, uh, which was the building we are referring to as the Scruples site. This is that's a big boxy building. This one has nicer materials, absolutely, but it's a big boxy building. And that facade, I do think at the ground level, it's very nice. I do like the ground level, and the next couple of stories could be fine but I just think that top doesn't um, work. And again, I did bring this up earlier, but I understood that there was no real conversation or dialogue that this would be the time for discussion. So no complaint about Heather and the way this has gone. This is as I understood. So I appreciate that. That's it. Thank you. When I'm, so let's talk about the ele elements of form real quick. From my perspective, when I look at those elevations, the height, um, I I can see where Main Street's going. And yes, it is the first of the development on Main Street, but I can see where it's going. And I can see when we had all of Dennis's um, inspirational before the CBD was given to town meeting. And I can see where Main Street is going. And I think it is in the direction that town meeting wanted. And when you talk about massing, if it went to a three and a half story, I actually believe it would look squat. I believe it'd be long and linear versus the way it is. The proportions of that front facade is actually really well done. Um, the, and there with the tripart, it does have the base, it has the middle, it has the top, it has that proportions on it. It has, um, it, it helps build the sidewalk with the trees and then the silhouette. 
So I, I think it is actually very well done. There are certain little pieces here and there. As me as a designer, I would not have done that, but it doesn't mean that it does not still do it. When we you know, have talked about massing, people think it's about the size of it, but it's actually the shaping and the form of that building and how it fits into it. When you look at the historical house, it's two doors down from it. It is a flat roof. It is taking an homage to that. It's respecting that in some ways. And then as you move to the residence, it's going to the sloped. I see when you take, you know, right now it's a, it's the first project. It's it's the first one, but I can see the hard the um, liquor store being developed as Dieb was much more eloquent than I was discussing and bringing all of it together and really showing where this is supposed to be and where it's supposed to be going. It's not, it's not, it's it's building upon what the intention of this zoning was and why it was the way it is written. And um, so I, I just respectfully disagree with you, Maureen, and I, there's no other way I can go about it than say that. Other members of the board? Diab has his hand raised. Yep, go for it, Dave. Oh, go ahead, Diab. Hi. Uh, yeah, so I think I'm just going to say something really quick about this CBD zoning. I was on town meeting when it was passed. I actually rose in favor of it uh, in particular because I thought it was important that the planning board be the, the, the permit granting authority for the CBD. We were at McCall Middle School in the auditorium for some reason, but I remember that. I remember the the drawings that accompanied this. I remember all of the plans, and they we were the 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 CBD zoning allowed for buildings of this height or higher, and it was a cohesive view of what the downtown would look like. And one of the there's you know there's there's sort of hindsight perhaps in some people saying that. I didn't expect that to happen, that, that this building would be the result of that process, but that's the vision that was portrayed. Those are the numbers in the CBD. Those are the drawings. Dennis's drawings were what were shown to town meeting. So I think this is in spirit of what was passed and what was agreed upon. And I will, uh, you know, we do have, we don't have large buildings at the curb or not at the curb, but close to the street everywhere, but we certainly have very large buildings on the other side of, of Main Street. The, uh, the Winchester Savings Bank is certainly a large building, very massive. We were talking about massing. That thing is, is, is a huge mass. It's an appropriate side of the street for that mass to be on there. Um, but I really... I think this is goes along with the with what town meeting voted for, and I'll I'll stop there. Thank you. Um, I I would just this is Cheryl Wolf. I just like to um, agree with with Heather, um, the chair, and um, say that I think Dennis pointed out very clearly that if. If you were to change the the shape of the commercial face of this building um, to something more residential at the top, um, we would lose this opportunity to have a gateway, um, and we would end up with a very deep um, set of roof lines that are very residential right up against Main Street, and I it. In terms of massing, I think that bulk that was in the guidelines is is saying that a building, you know, a double loaded corridor housing building with all of the roofs pitched back at Main Street will be a very bulky mass. And I think this is an elegant solution to really reading as um, as Main Street. And um, I really appreciate hearing um, Diab's comments about, and also Heather's comments about the vision of downtown 
um, based on the zoning that people spent years of their life trying to bring about for the town of Winchester. Um, and the, this is, I think we're lucky to have um, a design like this come, come forward and, um, you know, provide housing to downtown. Um, I'm going to move forward. Um, one of the things we have not talked about in section four um, are the windows, um, are the patterns and proportions of windows consistent. Um, I, we have talked about them a lot in our, um, in our questions and um, Dennis has mentioned, um, and there has been adjustments to the patterns and proportions. For the members of the board, do you feel that they are consistent at this time? Uh, we did make obviously a condition for the historical house to be, those windows to be modified to be more consistent. Um, but outside of that, do we all, how do we feel about the patterns and proportions of the windows being consistent? Do you mean consistent with itself? Yes. And the impact on the neighborhood character. I think the windows are looking really good. Um, this is Cheryl, I would agree with that. And I think that um, they are, um, they're in, in character for the type of building facade that, that we have, and they will provide a lot of daylight to the units. Um, so I really appreciate that the architect thought of the, um, the residents in choosing the proportions and the size of the windows. Um, as far as the, um, the historic house, um, I did read over the conditions and I think they're a little um, unclear. They need to be a little more um, uh, specific, um, but I'm not sure that this is the right time to talk about language. So Brian, do you wanna pull up that condition real quick on the windows? Thank you. So the question I had, Heather, if you, do you want me to go forward with what I, I just think? so um, depending on how we proceed, uh, typically um, the planning board has a couple options. One, they can give with the conditions as written over to legal and authorize someone, or it comes back to the planning board. So I figured we just might as well um, go through and look at what what you would like. So what, pending however the board chooses in favor or not, or conditions or not, whatever, how that the language that we have a clear understanding of what you're talking about. So go ahead, Cheryl. So um, it, it references evaluating um, or whether or not to replace the windows with two over two or go back to what might have been which would have been, I believe it states six over six and that it prefers that the original build uh, windows be kept if they can be. Um, I would just say that I, I, I think it's kind of, it just needs to be really clear that if, if all the windows are in good shape, great. If half of the windows on the, on the street facade are bad and half are, are good? Do we keep half or do we replace all of them because we want all of the windows to be consistent and, and therefore they'll all end up new? Um, there's just a lot of language in here about, about restoring um, sashes and I, I find it unclear. And I also did not think it was clear that if, do, do we want six over six or do we want to follow what's currently there, which is two over two. Um, it's, it's. I think that why it's written the way it is, um, and Brian, I know you've had discussions about this with John as well, is because the historians have not come in on this house yet to do their part. So it's left more open ended. So when they come in, because this condition is based on the historical commission and the planning board working with the independent consultant 
to determine what what should happen in these situations. So it's kind of left more vague. Okay. Um, the if staff at the rear of the building are, we can't say what it's gonna be, but they should be more consistent with what's on the front facade. And it doesn't have to be in size, but it should be materials and similarities, right? So you could do. Yeah, so. that I completely agree with. I, I just didn't, I didn't, I was reading through this and, and wasn't certain if we needed to be more clear, but if, if you're comfortable because of past experience, that this is the right way to go until, you know, our consultant is involved. I'm fine with that. Just a very quick note. I think it's just um, pointing it, pointing out that the historical consultant and the historical commission, uh, like these these conditions are are essentially implemented through the historical commission in conjunction with the historical consultant. So they, okay. they're going to be probably. Um, yeah, well, not probably. They're the ones who are who are going to implement. Okay, great. Thanks for the clarification. So I, Mina, do you feel comfortable leaving it kind of like this since the consultants haven't come in to work on this since it's destructive work? I, I think if they're if the consultants and the historical commission are both going to weigh in, it's really hard to say a whole lot more other than that both those processes need to play out. Um, and the historical commission, of course, has its own separate authority. So that's that's just a, a different process altogether, too. Thank you, Mina. Uh, there, I mean, there, there may be some tweaking to the words, but because there's a lot here, but I think you've explained here what what is historical from the planning board's perspective, uh, design perspective, uh, about the building, and that should give enough guidance there. Okay. Thank you, Mina. All right, moving on to number five, adequacy of proposed screening and buffering. We do have a condition that we added in our last meeting that deals with um, working with landscaping on the abutting property. Any other comments on that one? Um, I have a question, Heather. Yep, go ahead. Um, so I don't know if we would miss it by going back. I'm sorry, I know some of this is, you're certainly right to follow this, but what if I would like to discuss the corner that's um, got the cutout. Um, and I think that would come under massing. So I think we ought to go back to, I guess, I don't know if that's going back or where we are. Oh, um, there we can, we can ask Dennis, the corner with the balconies. Well, wait, we have, we have to hear from the board because we've not, I think, can we? Well, please we had, well, the reason why I'm going to Dennis is because how we left it is a bunch of us had questions on it and Dennis. Well, uh, I think it goes the other way. I think if we have um, at least a majority view that that ought to be, it just, we ought to figure that out. Board, can you please weigh in on your perspective on the corner balconies? Um, a clarification, these are the ones on Vine Street in Maine. Do you feel that they are compatible with the building? Brian, can right. you pull the elevation at the corner? You mean because there's no post in the corner? Yeah, I think, I believe that's different. Let me, well, it's actually a couple things. We've heard at different times from um, I Ching, um, Scott, who will be joining the board, and we've heard from Sally Dale, who will be joining the board. Um, Cheryl articulated thoughts that I agreed with at one point, um, and it had to do with different things. It ha certainly had to do with whether there's a kind of destabilizing effect of this, you know, the this massing where it's not supported. But the other point was that the, um, I think Yi Jing was pointing out how it's, uh, when you come in from North Main Street, this is a kind of gateway building, and that you've got, well, actually, um, Cheryl had made the point too, that you've also got these really large balconies, and people tend to stash their um, or it's not stash, but it just stays there. They're, um, what, little barbecues and so on. So this is not typically something that's attractive um, as time goes on. So it's a matter of how we feel about that, those corners being used for um, outdoor spaces, spaces that maybe aren't, are also quite exposed um, over Main Street. So it comes from several perspectives. Um, I personally think that it would look better if they were, if it certainly were supported, but I'm not sure it's a good idea to have these exposed balconies, or I don't think it is a good idea. And um, again, we heard from Cheryl in another meeting, or actually twice, and I, I hope, um, I hope, I'll say that, um, I hope she, um, you know, is, uh, 
She well, articulated something. She got certainly. I thought did it a did a good job. And I all right, Maureen. Let's, let's let here. them talk. Heather, hand in your hands up. Yeah, um, I like the balconies. I think it's a huge amenity if you have a condo to be able to sit outside and grow plants or barbecue or whatever. And I don't think we should get rid of them just because we think they won't look nice. I think that they will be um, a real selling point for those units. Deb? Uh, I, I'm, is the elevation of those balconies up on the screen? Brian, are you able to share the elevation? Uh I'm looking, what are you guys looking at? I'm looking at the PDF, it's possible there's an issue. I'm just seeing, what are you looking at? I'm just seeing the conditions at the moment. Yeah, we can just see the conditions oh, right now. I'm so sorry, everybody. Um, I've been pointing at stuff too, so that's been real fun for everybody um, today. How about now? Yeah, could you, um, could you get the one with the view down from Vine Street? Um, yeah, not there yet. You said it from Vine? Yeah. yeah. Okay. This is, this is the, um, I was initially concerned about the balconies and this is the viewpoint and listening to Dennis talk about the softening of that corner from the residential section in terms of breaking that corner at the front of the building so that you didn't, it wasn't hard. And I think this works because it actually reduces the massing of the building from Vine Street. And so I, I think they work. Cheryl? Yeah, no, this is, it's good to see this elevation or, or um, view axonometric. It's, um, I mean, <laughs> I think from this angle, um, you know, Dennis did make that comment. I, I, um, I still believe um, that the transition to the the roof, the change in the roof um, between the, you know, the commercial um, massing and then the roof here could be made really beautifully if the windows, the last set of windows, which would be, um, if you go to the left, Brian, yep, those, that one, and then the one next to it, to the right. Nope, and that one, that would be where the balcony would be, would it, where it would sit and it would allow it to have um, a west facing um, condition. And it would be the transition between um, you know, the two masses essentially is what I was suggesting earlier. But I'm, you know, I think the Juliet balcony at the corner could do, create a similar condition. No, that at the far left, you know, as we're talking about breaking up the mass at the edge here, I think um, a smaller Juliet balcony could be used there to, um, to do what it, it won't erode the mass the way that this does, but it would certainly um, would certainly help. I just don't. I think the cornice flying off at the top of the building is really unfortunate. Yeah, it doesn't really um, it doesn't speak to the elegance of the of the cornice and the the massing of the the commercial side of the building. Um, I, I could have said that more elegantly, Heather, but that was it. <laughs> I, I, I think it's so also the rendering. We don't have the detail of that cornice. So I always just assumed it was a detail of the rendering um, that was creating the that that optical illusion of it flying off. Um, well, yeah, I mean, if you go to the street, um, the, the highly rendered street view, I think that's the time that Maureen, I think, pointed it out as being really, there we go, very, it's more difficult to look at from this angle, I think, as just being kind of lost. Well, I think this is better than the other angle, but you're saying the opposite. Well, let's just say, what if, 
what if that was a very glassy corner, enclosed living room, but glassy, and then the balcony could be off the, on the western side and allow there to be um, allow there to be a transition between the front building and the and the more residential building mass. I think that would be better. And I also have to say, E. Jing came in on the chat and she was saying she wasn't against the balcony, she just thought the location. So that would be consistent with her own comment. So um, I don't know if everybody's watching the chat, but she did comment. Um, Heather, just a, sorry, this is Nina. Just a yeah. process point, and I certainly no disrespect to E. Jing on this, but I would just ask that unless you unless you say so folks don't put stuff in the chat that's you know public comment is closed and you don't have opportunities for anyone else to weigh in i just would you know the chat should really not be used at all in my opinion in this view i think i think you may have an, an issue there with the hearing if you if that continues thank you so uh to the public who is using chat can you please not use the chat um so Looking at the plan, Cheryl, the deck is off of the living space, off of the units. And if you move it over to the side, it's off of the bedroom. Um, if you could go to the plan, I'll, I can show you what I was, what I was considering. And oh, I think I know what you're saying. So have the window turn into a door in the living space. Yep. Basically, you would carve out the living space in order to create that balcony in that corner. You're talking about this view just in plan, or um, you're talking about the plan of the the fourth floor unit? Okay. Thank you, Brian. Yeah, other way. So if you mirror that deck to the other side, yeah, you could have the the window that's on on the angle and the and the window facing completely south or north. No. South, north. <laughs> Sorry. Um, you would have the balcony create um, create a, a straighter. Yes, I wish I could draw it. Well, you could have it, the door to the belt, the deck be the angled window where the angled window is and it can run along the perimeter in front of the bedrooms. Correct. But I, I, I would have the, I would leave the massing as it is, but I would have the balcony come out and go, yeah. Um, up there, but then carve out the balcony in the space, just in the same way the corner is carved out of the, on the other side, right? And then that space is given back to the living room. And do the corner and glass. Exactly. It's really a mirror, just a mirror, a mirror image. I mean, you have to, yeah, almost. I mean, you just have to rework, maybe the deck wouldn't be as deep into the living room, but you would have you would have a deck that's um, that's protected, um, but it would have it would be open. If you go down to the to the south side or the yeah the south side, there's a deck in the corner there. See how there's a deck? No, to the right. It exactly that deck transitions you from the commercial side of the building, which is straight, yeah, to then you move to, you know, the, the residential roofing side of the building. So it would act similarly to that. Dennis, do you, Dennis, um, oh, go ahead, Deb, for, go ahead. I, I, ju gonna... I just wanted to, first off, I can't seem to take my hand down. Um, the other is that 
I would be, my only concern about moving it is that currently it seems all of the decks are off of the communal areas of the units in the sense that they're in the public areas and not off of the bedrooms. So that means they're available for entertainment or whatever. And if the deck on the corner were moved over, I would think they would also, because it's, they are the larger decks, I would want to make sure that they're also in the same sort of more public areas of the units and not off the bedrooms. Because I think they'd be more useful that way. So Deb, if you look down at the bottom of unit 405 at the bottom corner, you uh, access it off of the public space, but it does go in front of the bedroom. That's kind of uh, what we're uh, recommending. Could you zoom that please? Because yeah. no, the kitchen. See, see, it's off of the public space, but it does have the window does, but the. Whoops, whoops, whoops. Ah, okay. So it comes off of the kitchen. Mm -hmm. And it still but, would in this case, and then it would. So right, it's really I, just putting the deck on the other end of that public space of those okay. units. Okay, could you zoom, go back up to the top, please, Brian? Now, don't change the magnification because, again, I should get bifocals, but I refuse. Now that just, 35 people need, people know you need bifocals. Oh, come on. It's, I'm of that certain age. Brian, you're still not getting to the top. Can you just, yep, and then slide it down, slide it down. There we go. Okay, so that would actually be still in the public space. Yes. Okay, thank you. Then, then that's my only concern. Dennis, what are your thoughts on that? Well, uh, it's easy. I'd leave it where it is. Facing the morning sun is a lovely place to be. It, it, otherwise, it's facing northwest. And yeah, it can get a few sunsets, but not many. But it would be facing um, the residential neighborhood instead of yeah, the bank. But generally, when you go on a terrace, you'd like to be in the sun. At least that's my understanding. And you do get a view uh, across town towards the hills. And Main Street will be different someday from gas stations. That's the goal. I like the way uh, Cheryl described it. I thought there were a lot of advantages, just the sense of not hanging over Main Street. That is not, I don't, even if it changes, it's still a corridor. And um, again, I'd like to see that corner strengthened and the corner is not suspended. I just think there's a lot to be, it's an, it, there's a lot of advantage for the um, building and maybe I think advantages for the residents. Heather, Hannah, what are your thoughts? I like it how it is. I, I think it's gonna it's gonna put it in the. I like the location. I like agree with Dennis that the location of the balconies is best, and I think I said it earlier is that yes, I would not have designed this if I designed it this way, but it does not negate that it still meets the zoning from my perspective. But I would have probably designed it slightly different and done some different things, but it doesn't take away from that it meets the zoning in my opinion. So. I, I am fine with leaving it. That's why I didn't bring it up in when I originally discussed my perspective. Um, going, going, um, uh, Dieb? What? Did Cheryl and Heather and Maureen, did you want to weigh in anymore? Are you all set? I would just wait in saying, I'm just, I'm fine with leaving it. Yeah, I'm fine with leaving it. Okay. Uh. I was just going to say I think that um, your comments about what what we're what we're here for um, are good, Heather. So let's stick to the to the list. Okay. Um, so five also with the um, HVAC and all the mechanicals that there's a condition. Hang on. Hang, I'm sorry, Heather. I guess I have to raise my hand. Um, 
could we just discuss the dormers for a minute? Dennis said that he would be coming back to the dormers after the approval, but um, it, well, took, it looks like it's going to an approval, but um, I do feel that, could we go back to the image you had um, just before this, um, Brian, that was a good one. What dormers are you talking about, Maureen? Well, I can't even say dormers. I think they're all, they're the shed dormers. Okay. And are they on the screen? I don't see them yet. Yes, they are. Oh, sorry. I guess my connection's a little slow. Well, Dennis said he thought he'd get to them eventually, but right now there are these kind of, oh, there we are, kind of sloped right down from the top. I do think they could be there. Um, and then they come straight down um, into the wall. So we don't have them set in and we don't have them pulled off the ridge line. So it's, um, there, I just think they could be, they, they could look lighter, less, um, I don't know what to call them. Um, but anyway, they could, they could, they'd look nicer if they were something happened here. Dennis, I guess maybe if you don't mind, Heather, could we find yeah, out what Dennis. you've got in mind? Dennis, hands raised. Go ahead, Dennis. Uh, design review doesn't stop at this point. Design review continues, and that is in the list of what needs to still be reviewed. I'll be honest with you, this submission has more detail than just about any project I've been a part of working for the public sector. There's more character here than in just about any project. And I, I give them a lot of credit. I agree about the dormers. They're in our list and we will get to them. We have told the development team that that is an issue. I also think it's an issue detailing wise at the top. Right, but, I do too. So I'm, uh, I just would like to ask um, on. one more question. How does this work? Because in this board, we've not handed over um, design development to somebody else. Um, this board's always approved projects that get built. So I'm uh, questioning maybe to Heather, what do you think is going to happen? I was just gonna ask for the list of things that are still in development from your perspective, Dennis. I know um, just this evening, there's you mentioned the dormers. Um, Cheryl and I mentioned the cornice that, right? Um, I just wondering what else. Well, it was a document given to the board, I don't know, six weeks ago, I think. Yeah. Um, I can look it up and give you the list. Um, but this, every design review I've ever done for different cities, not just Cambridge, Chelsea and, and other cities, the design review continues till the documents are, are completed. And then a wall has to be built with an approved um, a test wall with the key design issues shown, including a portion of the cornice, perhaps, a portion of the window. Um, it, that is it, Brian. Thank you. There Thank you, you go. Brian, for pulling that up. I was just going. Thank you. So Dennis, just to, I'm going to clarify what you said is, so we've had this memo and we were unclear that um, this is, this is where you're at still today. So, oh, yeah. there, so we will keep this as um, the mm -hmm. further refinements and things that will be looked at hereafter. And, and there's an opening at the end, uh, Madam Chair, it basic, I believe there is usually there is anything new opens the door. Mm -hmm. So it, let's just say the architect for whatever reason changes something, if it's minor, we'll handle it. But if it's significant, Brian will contact the board and just say something's changed. That's happened once in my career, but it could happen. I don't expect it. Yeah, continuing conditional ongoing design review. Thank you. So I, I my apologies, because I thought you were still oh. working since you wrote this memo. And so I didn't realize that. Thank you. So that. Maureen, does it help you? The design really hasn't changed since this memo. Yeah, no, it hasn't. So I didn't know if you were just, 
I'm good. Are you? So will it become? Um, I, I, it will be another board, I would guess. Again, assuming this is going to get voted on. But um, so does the board ever see it again, or I mean, or is this totally delegated? It, to the, I more, don't in his the memo, process. in his memo, it says at what phase it'll come back to the planning board. Okay. It's um, does Brian. Can you bring it back up, up in the first paragraph? It says that ninety. We'll give an update to the, we'll do a review update meeting at 90, 50, and 90, and a model oh, of approval. Construction document, but yeah. And so, then approval um, of the design packet will be reported to the planning board, okay. if anything significant, different. And that, does that have to be put into, well, that's agreed with the consultant. I guess that's where it's rests. So that's an, a separate agreement, by the way. That's not a condition with the applicant. That's an agreement with the consultant. If the applicant doesn't meet this, I can recommend to the board not to agree to a, a building occupancy permit if these criteria aren't met. That has happened once in my career and it was rectified within a week. <laughs> So these are your recommendations for um, conditions, essentially. So, uh, so we can add them in as conditions. So oh. while we're on that topic, we want to make sure we end up with a sufficient amount in escrow before um, voting because we have had problems with that also. Uh, Heather, I- No, oh, I'm I sorry, Deb, go ahead. Yeah, I just wanted to ask if uh, Mina could weigh in on whether how we would, I, I'm, I'm, I agree with Maureen that I think we probably want to put something in this in our conditions that would relate to this document. And if Mina could provide some sort of a form that would be in or whether he thinks we actually need to put it in there. Uh, I trust Dennis's experience, um, but I am concerned about making sure that the town is protected. Mina. Sure, so uh, thank you, Heather. Um, yeah, that's a good question. I, I don't understand uh, Dennis to be saying that it would be just up to Dennis with, with no nothing back. So I, I would expect a condition that basically says, actually, I, I sort of read number one, as the draft of a condition on the screen right now as a draft of a condition that basically says the applicant agrees to for design consistency and integration of all details over time um, that they will continue to submit um, these at the 50 and 90 to Dennis and Brian which will allow Dennis and Brian and whomever else may need to be there if there's engineering issues, et cetera, from, uh, on that side from the town uh, to determine if there's been any deviation from what you approved and you've discussed things in great detail. So, you know, there'll be pretty high standard for, for sticking to it. Um, and if there is a deviation, as Dennis said, that's when we come back and that we can clarify that a little bit more in the, in the condition Diab that that's when it would come back. Uh, but that's, I, I understood that to be the same process that you're, you're considering. Okay, so we could, so we could actually add number, what we see on the screen is number one to our list of conditions just I, to make sure I, that we're covered. Yes, I, I believe Brian's draft list includes something of this to the same effect, but. Um, oh, okay, I missed it. It, it, it does, it does. Okay, thank you. And if I could add, I'm happy to come back any time to give an update to the board, even if it's 20 minutes, if, if the board wants me to. Thank you, Dennis. All right, so moving on. Um, so uh, going back to number five, I, I didn't finish what I was saying, but in terms of the HVAC and mechanicals, um, the screening and stuff needs to come back to the planning board once it's all located to make sure that it is not visible from any uh, public or private way. Um, that the mechanical equipment themselves so, and buffering is appropriate for that. So that's a condition of that one. Um, number six, impact. Yep. I think that should all, that also includes screening and buffering of the neighbors from the ground. And we do have landscaping, 
right? That we have that one. We have that one. Mm -hmm. And I don't and know. That if is the... come back to the board. That is not to go to consultant. Although go to consultant, but the the board, the planning board is the one who has the final say. Right. Uh, if that condition is met. Um, as we talked about it last week. Um, so going to number six, impacts on the natural environment, included but not limited to changes in topography, installation of retaining walls, or removal of mature trees. Any comments? I think we're good. It's, it's a pretty desolate site right now. Um, and uh, number seven, um, and I also feel I should say also that it works really well with Vine and how it moves up with the historical house remaining and how it deals with the slope change up Vine Street. Um, number seven, fiscal impacts, including impact on town services, tax base and employment. It supports, from my perspective, it, it supports additional employment for our town um, with an additional commercial unit. It supports our tax base and it, and it um, has minimal impact on our town services. Anyone have any thoughts or comments? Um, I agree. I think the, 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 the one thing that we always, uh, is always a concern on the town's mind is impact on schools. Um, there will certainly be children moving into this unit. I don't think, I don't see that as a problem. I see that as um, it's good. We have kids coming into a school system, which is good. Um, and any, any unit, any housing that we put up will have an impact that way. So I just wanted to get that out there. Yeah, I'm pretty, this is Cheryl, I'm pretty thrilled about that too, Dia, because these are kids who are gonna, gonna get to walk to school. And, um, you know, we're pretty lucky as a town that we've kept our schools in town. And um, that's part of the character of the town. I think it's, it's, it would be great. Moving on, um, I don't see anyone's hand raised. Moving on to number eight, impacts on the historic resources as defined by section 10 of this bylaw. We are we have thoroughly vetted um, the historical resources in all of our meetings. Um, is there any additional comments? All right, so um, from my understanding, um, and Brian, if correct me if I'm wrong, or Mina, at this point, I don't believe that we are disagreeing with any of, uh, can you scroll down? Oh, you moved it. Um, I don't believe that we are disagreeing with any of the recommendations of our other town agencies or officials at this point. Um, and so going forward, I'm going to move on to the next. Um, actually, uh, Beth, are you there for town engineering? Yep, I'm here. I just want to confirm, is that your feeling as well from the engineering department at this time? Um, yeah, so, uh, you know, we had provided a letter um, and we got a response from Beals Associates. Um, most of the things I think they said would be addressed um, during the next, um, in the next set of plans before they apply for a building permit, which we're happy to work with them on. The only one I wanted to point out was um, the drainage connection on Elmwood Ave, which I would like to discuss further with DHB who's doing the peer review um, for the Conservation Commission. So I think that's from, from the letter that was provided and their response, I think that's the only issue that I um, would like to pursue a little bit further. And that's in um, part of those, those conditions and part of the other process as well. Yeah, well, I mean, it, you know, it's worth noting that they are proposing a direct connect, direct tie in connection from their system into the town's drainage system. So, um, you know, that's something that should probably be addressed as part of the planning board review, not just the conservation commission. That's really not sort of within the ConCom purview. And how did, how are we addressing that, Brian? So again, it has, the issue hasn't, so, you know, I provided a letter and I got, we got a response um, from Beals on Wednesday. So there hasn't been time to really address it further, we are having a separate meeting with BHB and Beals on Monday um, to go through the issues that were brought up as part of the, um, the peer review that was done for the Conservation Commission. And it's my goal to talk about this issue at that meeting as well, to make sure that we've closed the loop on any concerns. Um, um, 
very super quick. So that's already the uh, condition in here, um, or it, it reflects that that there was a memo um, from from Beals and Associates, and that they have to work with the town engineer to resolve all those issues. Um, sorry for all going so quickly. Um, here it is. It is uh, number ten. A list of concerns by engineering department and then response letter. And here's the, the condition really. Any further engineering concerns must be reviewed and approved by the engineering department and the Department of Public Works. So that so covers that. Put it in there. I just I was hoping you'd pull that up just so we could. Yep. Um, all right. So that is taken care of. And um, we addressed design review and historical commission, housing, um, all the boards who gave us input. Um, okay, um, Heather, sorry, sorry to interrupt. Um, I had a, on the last page of my comments, I had several conditions that I recommended be specifically incorporated in the decision. I think, um, I know Brian sort of, um, just referenced my letter. I think it would make sense to have those conditions directly inserted into the decision just to make sure it's very clear and very obvious what the applicant's responsibilities are. All right. to make sure that that will happen for sure. I mean, Thank you, Brian. You know, Appreciate yep. it. I don't think any any members of the planning board have any issues with that. Okay, so let's move on to uh, site plan approval. Um, some of these we've already covered because they're under special permit, um, but let's roll through these as well. So this is section 9.57 um, for site plan approval and the zoning bylaws. And these are the criteria that we use to gauge um, for that, uh, for granting a site plan approval. Starting with number one, um, unreasonable departure from the character, materials, and scale of buildings in the vicinity. We have discussed that this evening as under special permit. Two, minimize any adverse effect on any historic resource. We have discussed that at length in many of our meetings. Number three, minimize the volume of cut and fill, the number of removed trees, uh, the length of removed stone walls, the air of wetland, vegetation display, soil erosion, threat of air and water pollution. Um, that has been that CONCOM is looking at has looked at that closely. Um, there are no trees on the site to remove um, minimal um, cut and fill um, in terms of uh, to deal with any grading. Any thoughts on that? Uh, DM? Yeah, my only concern here is to make sure since this uh, this has been used as a hardware store for some time, and they've been storing various materials in the back to make sure that when they do the excavation, I don't know if there's a possibility there may be some contamination in that soil. And just to make sure that that's dealt with correctly. And I don't know to whom I would, who would, who in town would deal with that. Is that an engineering issue? I think it makes the most sense. No, not, not yeah. engineering. It's a probably a combination of health and um, fire department if there's like an underground tank or something that's found. Well, I'm just thinking about, you know, um, contamination for in the soil or mm -hmm. underneath the, uh, the asphalt. We don't know what's underneath there. I, at least I don't know that they've done any surveys underneath there. I might be wrong on that. Right, but before they excavate, they're gonna have to do that and that's gonna have to go through DEP and, and the Board of Health. Okay, so if there are already things in place to handle that, then in the normal course of events, then I'm fine. Uh, Mina, do you have any weigh in on this? Yeah, I mean, to the extent that they find any um, environmental contamination on their site, as a site owner, they're going to be fully responsible for that uh, to DEP. They have a whole reporting obligation. There's a, the mass contingency plan process. And actually, towns can't go above and beyond that for how to deal with the contamination. Uh, and then to the extent that it affects what the town might be doing in terms of any related roadway stuff, the town would be protected if it came from their site. So you have, you know. and, and if I can ask the question, will the town be notified if they find those things by law? Yeah, yeah that is one of the places where once you do a re report, if, if you're required to report it to DEP, you're also usually required to tell the Board of Health. And in any event, it's a public document. So it, it all comes, uh, through public notification. And I think you have to tell the chief executive of the of the town too, so the select board. Okay, thank you. Any other questions on number three or comments? Seeing none, I'll move to number four. 
uh, provide adequate stormwater management and other utilities consistent with the functional requirements of the planning board subdivision rules and regs. Um, there's an independent consultant who reviewed this and Beth and her team has been reviewing this as well. And we have accepted the conditions um, and those items that go over this specific area of concern. So I think we just need to be very clear that the VHB has not completed their peer review. So the, yeah. the conditions are that were in my letter are my conditions and not, there could be additional conditions that are set as part of the order of conditions. And Brian, is that language embedded in ours to take into account the additional conditions coming in? Yes, the two things that are conditioned uh, relate to the engineer, uh, anything in the engineer's memo, as well as the entirety of the order of conditions from the Conservation Commission. Which have not yet been finalized. No, it's that, that's why it's conditioned upon it. Yeah, just for anyone who's listening. Mm -hmm. um, Okay, so moving on to number five, maximize pedestrian and vehicle safety, both on the site and egressing from it. From my perspective and from our transportation consultant, they've done and the conditions that we've placed on it have made this um, to maximize the safety. Um, with this, there is some stuff that the town can do on our side that is with the select board. I believe in our conditions, we note that, correct? In terms of parking and regulating deliveries. So I have a question. Are we asking for a financial contribution from the developer towards the um, traffic study that was recommended by Tool? I thought we had that as a part. Is it, it is. It, it is listed in the draft. Is it? It is listed in the draft conditions at the moment, and that obviously will take place at some other time and will be done through the select board. Um, but. Um, in terms of that study. So it's more of a, that they, it was a, a fair share contribution, but we're not determining that fair share now. And it's for whenever that study would or could happen in the future. Could, could we see that language, please, Brian? Because I've already yep, forgotten. Just a second, yep. It's so um, this was part of the tool memo that was that we um, agreed with and incorporated into ours that said as determine the fair share contribution to this to the study not for reconstruction of Elmwood Avenue as described in the peer review memorandum attached to the satisfaction of the town of Winchester. Without a time mm -hmm. limit, meaning, meaning that's not for that's not necessarily us. It's for to the satisfaction of the town of Winchester because there's multiple parties here. There's this the uh, who's in terms of all of the study. So that's that that this was the uh, agreed upon condition from Tool that we or sorry we agreed with this condition from Tool. And was the the study was just of Elmwood Avenue? I can't recall. That is correct. As portions okay. of El the port, the well, it's part of a larger study, but but that the fact that there are a certain number of uh, you know most of the people living on the street um, are going to be uh, impacting, uh, or, or sorry, from this development um, will be impacting that street, and so they're saying they need to have that fair share contribution based upon those number of units. Okay, thank you. Any questions from the board? All right, moving on to the next item. Give one minute for Brian's computer to pick up its moment. All right, provide adequate access to each structure for fire and emergency service equipment. So I'll just jump in super quick. We um, did not, uh, so when we don't have a report after a certain number of times, or a certain number of days, um, they, they show that there's no um, there's no issues that they have. If there's any issues that uh, people might have with the fire and emergency service equipment, I would imagine their in, their engineer, uh, the applicant's engineer, can speak to that. That 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 was the first place that they went to before uh, before they even started de designing a building. Um, but uh, it's left up to the board for now. Um, at, at this point, I didn't, from my own knowledge, that there is no issues with fire and emergency service of this building. It will also be double checked during the building permit process with the building commissioner at that time as well. 
correct? Of course. You know? <laughs> like, right. just, everyone's looking at me like, what do you say? I'm like, can you please just, yes. Yeah, so. what, you're, what you're trying to say is that generally speaking, um, you know, the, you'd have to, at a minimum, you obviously would have to meet fire code, but I, I think this standard goes a little bit further uh, for adequate access. I, bet, I have not heard anything further from any of the staff recommendations to suggest otherwise. That's normally what would happen here. Yeah. All right, so um, number seven, minimize obstruction of scenic views from publicly accessible locations. So I believe, Diab, this goes back to what you were talking about earlier in our meeting regarding the eight extra feet. And by right, and what does that eight feet difference do? And it has a very minimal impact with the benefits outweigh. Yeah, if I if I could just make a geometric argument, um, the further away you are from the building, the less important the eight feet is, just because of the angle. Um, so, I don't think as you go up Vine Street, um, the people who are not, I don't think that eight feet will be a, a noticeable change over by right. Comments of any other board members? Moving on to number eight, minimize visual intrusion by controlling the visibility of parking, storage, utilities, such as HVAC systems and transformers or other outdoor service areas viewed from public ways or premises residentially used or zoned. Um, going through those, the parking is underneath storage of the utilities, um, the storage of all, a lot of the bikes are inside. A lot of the stuff is embedded inside of the, um, the building itself. Utilities such as HVAC um, is part of one of our conditions and the transformers to double check those finalized locations and to make sure they are screened um, and appropriately located. Um, and then um, the outdoor service areas viewed from public ways, those are internal, um, where their dumpster is, um, where the garbage is pickup is, is all internal. Um, and is, um, so I, I'm not seeing anything, any members of the board seeing any concerns? I don't have a concern per se. I think it would be useful to have um, site views to the roof to show that that it's screened, but that's just something that can come later. Are you talking about when they come in with their mechanical DM? Yeah, I'm talking about if you're up Vine Street, and I, I, to be honest, I can't remember or recall how much of the roof structure will be visible. We wanna make sure that as you go up Vine Street, you don't eventually end up looking at a bunch of AC units. Mm -hmm. That's all, and I don't, so. I think we could tighten that condition up to do that a little bit better. Yeah, the, that's the, just yeah. the condition. Sorry, to the condition is a, a similar condition is is already in there. The intent, I think, has been described to 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 determine what it's going to look like um, in terms of what mechanicals what mechanicals are going to look like from different points of view. And it has a different point of views, Brian. In that condition, that language is in there. It, it doesn't from, from from any specific point of view. It's saying that how they look, um, so it matters where they look from everywhere. We can put that as a can, we can put it in there in terms of for several or from I'm up Vine, from up Vine Street from up Vine Street if that's what we're concerned about. They're not okay. going to be seen from Main Street because they're recessed. No one's going to see anything from Main Street. Period. Yeah. No, not from Main. It's from Vine and from Elmwood. Okay, we can put that in. Uh, moving on to number nine, minimize glare from headlights and lighting intrusion. There is a condition on the lighting. Do you want to read that, Brian? Everybody looking at the Word doc? Yeah, we can see it. Um, so all signage and lighting are to be approved by the DRC with input from the town's design consultant. Um, so that, that 
that's all we have at the moment. We could, uh, it was either going to be with input from the town's design, town's design consultant through the planning board or not, but um, that was the only question that was related to lighting. So we also have a town bylaw too that they have to abide by as well for lighting. And so it also picks it up in there as well when they go to design the lighting. There will, yeah, there will obviously, well, this doesn't preclude any other per permits or regulations they might have to follow. Yeah, if, if I could um, just say that there's a lot, even the town's regulations still allow an amount of spillage onto neighboring properties. And I think it's really important that we ensure that there isn't floodlight coming down onto the um, courtyard, let's say, which will impact the Vine Street neighborhood. I don't think the Elmwood neighborhood will be as impacted I, because there, there isn't really like this public little square that might have individual lighting, although there might be street level lighting. Um, but anything that um, might shine up towards or that affect Vine Street, maybe maybe it's sufficient. I've just, in my perusal of the town's lighting restrictions, I've never found them to be terribly restrictive. But um, well, would it be okay to go? All me all materials are to be finalized. All all signage and lighting are to be approved by design review committee with input from the town's design consultant. Um, including a focus on minimizing light intrusion into any other property. Yeah. Yeah. I just, it's, you know, there, the, you know, the luminosity profile of the lights is important in terms of how much it's shaded, what it's designed, how, what its spot is designed to fill. And so there's a, there's a lot that goes into really good lighting design. And I just want to make sure the, the, the neighborhood's protected as much as possible. There will always be light coming from this building because there are units in there and people will have lights on in windows. Um, so there's no way around that, but thank you. Mina, is that, is that okay? Um, cer certainly within reason. And I think we'll, we'll just have to um, you know, the design review committee can't, for instance, use that condition to um, say, you know, no lights on ever, but there can be some reasonable conditions on the design to do that. Um, I think it, it has to do with the specking of the lights and the fixtures that they're going to choose so that they are minimizing that light intrusion. Uh, Dennis, I see your hand is raised. Y yes, uh, picking up on what everybody's saying, the goal will be that no light will be shed directly onto adjoining property. I mean, obviously there'll be some light, but you can choose fixtures that are directional and they get fine tuned um, when the building's about to open up as far as the direction. And that's what we'll look into. We'll definitely be looking at that. Thank you. Any other questions from the planning board? Going back to the list. Um, number 10, minimize contamination of groundwater from on-site wastewater disposal systems or operations on the premises involving the use, storage, handling, or contaminant of hazardous substances. So we've talked about this. Uh, again, it goes back to engineering, goes back to um, CONCOM, it goes back to our consultants, and it goes to um, some of the questions that Dia had. So we've taken care of this, I believe, uh, planning board. No comments, moving on to number 11. Ensure compliance with the provisions of the zoning bylaw, including parking, signs, landscaping, and environmental standards. I keep going first. Does someone wanna go first? Do you just want me to <laughs> just- Well, I can, I can jump in and I wanna pick up on something that I believe Maureen um, mentioned in our last meeting, namely that, um, we don't have the full up landscaping plan that we usually see when we do a site plan review. And I know Dennis has commented that this, in his experience, this usually comes later. I think I'm quoting you correctly, Dennis. Yes. Um, but this is new for us and that we don't actually have a final landscaping plan with the species. Um, and so I, I don't know whether the 
how the board, the rest of the board feels, whether we should require a final landscaping plan before we come to a decision. Because um, I see it in the conditions that they have to give us one, <laughs> but that's kind of like saying, we're gonna ignore number 11 or what it is until we get it later. There's so. a tremendous, I'm sorry, I'm cutting you off. I probably shouldn't. Um, no, I'm done. A tremendous amount of information in those plans, but the specs of the trees, Right, those aren't fully vetted yet. Um, the shape, the caliber, but the overall hardscape and various things are pretty much are pretty sophisticated and where they're at. But it would part of this. It comes back to the planning board. The landscape, final landscape, comes back to the planning board. But that is also something that Dennis would review as part of his process steps after um, after the after the board decides how they're going to proceed. So. Um, it, 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 I don't think there's going to be much change in the hardscape. We talked about the sidewalk. That's one of the conditions. But in terms of the softscape, I don't think there's going to be much change. It's just defining what it is and making sure. And then there's obviously, there's a two part. There's one, there is the landscaping of the actual property. Then there's also the landscaping of the, of the landscape of the property adjacent. There's one thing I didn't care for. I can't remember where. I guess it was was something about, oh, there it is, broad or columnar. They really should be broad trees. Main Street needs something that arches over it. Uh, columnar trees are, I always think of as Bradford pears and they're little lollipops. Um, I think we want to get rid of columnar. I agree. I could, um, I could do that. I just want to say that was directly from the recommendations from the design review committee. That's the only reason it's in there. So uh, pardon my ignorance. Can someone, um, I guess a pear tree is, is there a more extreme example of what a columnar tree would be? Because I just, I'm, I'm, I agree with you, Maureen. They should, we should definitely have arching trees. I think that's, that would really improve things. But what's a common columnar, I guess, I'm thinking. I Evergreen. A birch. Like, <laughs> a birch? A birch is columnar. Okay. It's, <laughs> it's a column. It, like, they come in different. They're 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 grown in different ways. Uh, Almost any tree has multiple shapes, but except maples and oaks. But um, uh, no, it just leave it the way it is. It's fine. I, I just took it out. It's, I, I just say if you're looking at say a broad shade tree instead yeah, of broad or broader uh, use use a broad shade tree. Um, so I think that goes through uh, the all right. Are we at the Final. Um, yeah. So once you've gone through all the, the site plan review criteria, you would um, you could um, you could start entertaining votes. You could keep discussing waivers. Um, that that's one uh, question that we haven't talked about yet. Um, but basically, uh, if they're moving towards a decision, there would be a, a vote on the site plan review, a vote on the special permit, and a vote on the waivers. Planning board, did you want to discuss more, or I would entertain a motion? I would like to see the waivers. That's just me. Yeah. So um, I'll this is I'll go through this very quickly. Um, there's four waivers that are four dimensional waivers that the applicant is looking for. Um, one is the height. Uh, the by right height is 45, uh, special permit up to 65. They're requesting a, a relief for a height of 52.83. As Dia noted earlier, is that if a parking facility is located within or beneath the building, the height may be increased to the maximum height for its height zone through a special permit. This is not going to the max height. The max floor area ratio is, is squarely right on the borderline. Um, at, at maximum of 2.55, it's requesting relief for the FAR based at 2.49. And then the front setbacks are zero feet. Um, and there's there are several front setbacks here. Um, it's the uh, uh, it's up to ten feet. You can go up to ten feet away for required ramping system for ADA with a special permit, which is portion, partially the reason why the applicants are requesting this relief. They're requesting two feet on Main Street and three feet on Vine for ramping system and floodplain controls. 
And then the last uh, waiver they're requesting um, is the minimum rear setback. Um, they're allowed to be 20 by right or 15 by a special permit. So they're requesting 15 because they're going through uh, that uh, special permit process. So the idea is that are the um, uh, criteria once you would get to a, a special permit is have the criteria been met to to uh, um, in order to uh, give these waivers. Um, it looks like Beth Rudolph has a hand also. Uh, Chair, uh, I'm, I'm all done. Beth, your question? Thank you. Um, so I had a question in my, um, in my memo about, and I'm glad Nina's here, about how, you know, with the building being very close or right at the front setback, um, obviously they're gonna need to be occupying the town's right of way um, for like the duration of the construction um, and how that would work in terms of permitting. It seems like a street opening permit is not like the appropriate vehicle for that to happen. So there's some sort of temporary easement the town is granting or like, how is that being addressed? And then also, you know, if there's, um, if the sidewalk has to be closed during construction, we need to figure out like a temporary sidewalk access through that area. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, Mina, do you have any insight into that? Sure, let me um, answer and, I, and Beth, I may need just a little clarification. I think there's actually two things going on. Let me start with the second one. In terms of sidewalk closures and impact on both pedestrian and vehicular traffic, um, I would suggest a condition that they uh, work with, um, again, engineering department and DPW to have adequate, um, I mean, again, the exact wording will need to be figured out, but um, adequate. No, just, um, taking, just taking notes here, Mina. Sorry. Exactly, I figured, no, I know what I was saying. So I think that's one condition. Um, in terms of the site work, um, they, if I'm understanding you correctly, Beth, this would be, they wouldn't be building anything permanent in the right of way. So it would just be a temporary license or easement. And typically if it's something that's under a year, a license can be granted by the select board um, and, and that can be negotiated that way. If it's something longer term construction, um, they may and they do, they absolutely need um, to be on town land and want those rights, there may need to, they may need to negotiate an easement. So that's a matter of property rights of what they need or whether they have alternatives for building that they can figure out. So it'd be a uh, license for work. It probably would be a license. I, mean, I, I guess at the end of the day, it's hard to, to say for sure. At the end of the day, I think it's, it's right to anticipate that they might need something from the town there. It would be hard given how close they are to the setback, uh, the front setback. But um, that's ultimately, um, it would be the same as if they were two feet from anybody else's setback. Let, let me just put it that way. If they were two feet from a, a neighbor's setback and had to access that property, it would be up to them to secure adequate access. It might just be as simple as an access agreement, an access license for the time they need it, or if it's something more complicated, like for instance, what the town is doing with the MBTA um, in the center, that, um, that may need more of a, of a you know, more detailed easement agreement. Um, and so it's really what, what, what would be the, what the actual, I, I don't want to overstep here in this agreement on what would be, should be required for them to get in advance. Um, they need to obtain the adequate access rights from the town. And that's really up to the select board as the as folks maintaining town property to decide whether that uh, a simple access agreement sufficient, or they want to negotiate something, um, you know, larger. How much insurance we need, et cetera, and some of that obviously will involve our office, I assume. So just with that, then that does not need to be a condition because that's just uh, something that they have to work. I, I don't on. think like, so. I mean, but the working yeah. with engineering and DPW for the safe sidewalk closure can be. I, I think that's right. I think the second one is a matter of whatever they do on their site can't get in the way. Of traffic and, and so on. That's a, that's a condition, but in terms of getting on town property, you know, absent town permission, they wouldn't have that right anyway. Beth, does that answer your question too? 
Yeah, I just, the, the, you know, the only mechanism right now I have to like permit work is a street opening permit, which it seems like not the right tool for this. So it's, you know, I mean, they're going to be out there occupying the sidewalk for an extended duration, you know, right. at least a year, I'd imagine. So just wanted to raise that. Thank you. Thanks, Jeff. Thank you. Um, so yeah, so these are all the waivers. Um, these are really more tied, obviously, to the special permit criteria. So, um, you know, it's really site plan review kind of first. Members of the board, any comments? Well, I assume I'm a little bit puzzled for site plan review. Aren't we referring to 7.3.15.5? That's for the CBD. I guess I'm directing it to Brian. Um, yep, hold on. All right, uh, can you see this? Um, sorry, 7.3.15. It's not there. We can't sorry. see it, we're still, on, we're still on the waivers. Oh, sorry, uh, here we go. Um, here. So um, these are taken, um, these are taken from the special permit criteria. We. Um, have gone through all of these traffic circulation and access, pedestrian safety and access, emergency vehicle access. It's really kind of done through um, several different uh, ways, but um, it does. The only difference, Maureen, you do point out is correct, is that uh, consistent with design review guidelines in 7317 um, and acoustical impact. Right, but it's, if we're voting on site plan review now, this is what's applicable. You are 100% correct. So it would have to reference whoever's, yeah, it would have to reference 7315 for site plan review, correct? Um, well, I would like to make a motion to uh, approve, I believe that's the wording, site plan review under section 73155. I guess for, you need someone to for, second that. Is that? I would say I would just add for this for for the for the you know for 654 Main for, Street or for for 654 yeah. Main Street. And then it's up to the chair to call for the for the second. I think. Yeah, it is second. Is there a second? Second that. Motions made by Dia was second by Cheryl. Discussion. I'll speak. I am going to vote against this. I don't believe um, that I could possibly say that this project is consistent with the character and scale of the, um, especially the neighborhoods. I just think it's totally out of scale with the neighborhoods. And I also um, don't believe it's consistent with the design review guidelines in 7.3.17. And um, in particular, the whole um, issue comes up about how this impacts the neighborhood. Um, I guess I think the purpose of this um, hearing was to hear what the neighbors think, um, as well as to use our own judgment on what the neighborhood is like. And um, I just, to my eye, this doesn't do it. I would have expected um, a different project to come in. Um, and the fact of the matter is that we have been hearing consistently uh, how the, the neighborhood um, is opposed and I see it as a built environment and I just don't see that consistency. So that's, I just want to make that clear. Any other comments? All right, roll call vote, please. Hannon, aye. Jurius, aye. Um, Meister, no. 
Wolf, aye. Von Mehring, aye. Motion passes for one with Meister as the no. Entertain a second motion. Uh, I move that we grant, do we need to grant the waivers first or the special permit first? Um, I think you would, you would grant, you, you grant us, uh, Mina might want to, might have went away and also, but I would imagine you would, you would do uh, something related to the special permit and then uh, on the, on the conditions that we've talked about um, um, as well as, and then there would be a vote on each of the waivers. I agree with that, Brian. I might take the waivers first, though, because if if you're really reviewing the special permit criteria with the waivers in mind, you know, meaning you, you know you have you have the, um, for instance, um, requesting 15 feet. Uh, take, just to take the last one as an example, how that factors into the other ones might affect your decision whether the waiver passes or not. If that makes sense. So I, I might start with just the four waivers and then go to, back to special permit, DM. Okay. Uh, well, then I move that we grant the waiver number one, the height waiver, requesting a built height of 52.83 feet, where the by right height is 45 feet and the special permit height is up to 65 feet. Is there a second? Yes. Heather Hannah with the second. Discussion? Roll call vote, please. Hannah and I. Jarius, I. Um, Meister, no. Wolf, I. Von Mehring, I. Motion passes 4 1 with Meister as the no. Entertain a motion. Well, I will continue making motions. Uh, I move that we accept waiver number two uh, for the maximum floor area ratio with a request of 2.49 with 1.5 by right and up to 2.5 with special permit. Is there a second? Yes. Second by Heather Hannon. Discussion? Roll call vote, please. Hannon, aye. Jarius, aye. Meister, no. Wolf, aye. Von Mehring, aye. Motion passes 4 1 with Meister as the no. Entertain a motion. I will move, unless someone else wants to move. I will move that we accept waiver number three for the front setback. Uh, requesting a two foot property um, setback from the property line on Main Street and three feet on Vine Street, where the by right is zero feet. And is there a second? Yes. Heather Hannon with the second. Discussion? Roll call vote, please. Hannon, aye. Jarius, aye. Oh, Meister, aye. Sorry. Wolf, aye. Motion passes 5 0. Entertain a motion. I move that we accept, or we have forgotten the words already. We accept waiver number four, which is for the minimum rear setback, the request of 15 feet, 20 feet by right, and 15 feet with special permit. Second, is there a second? Yes. Hannon with the second, discussion? Roll call vote. Hannon, aye. Jarius, aye. Meister, no. Wolf, aye. Von Meiering, aye. Motion passes 4-1 with Meister as the no. Entertain a motion. Okay, I guess um, I move that we accept, is that the right language? We accept, the, we accept the special permit 
under section 942 uh, for 654 Main Street. Uh, with with the conditions. Uh, <laughs> it's I, with I was, the conditions. I was, was going to say with the conditions set forth at uh, the, the March 4th. Yeah. With the conditions set forth on March 4th. Can you repeat that? I move that we uh, grant. grant, thank you, a special permit for 654 Main Street using the criteria of section 942 with the conditions set forth at the planning board meeting on March 4th, 2021. Is there a second? Yes. Hannon, with the second, um, I, I actually discussion, but I would like to say something before we proceed. Um, with that, I believe, yeah, it might be best if we uh, we delegate someone to review those and finalize them, including town council for signature. Is this the yeah. time to do that in that vote? Um, I, would that be appropriate, Mina? Yes, okay, sir. so I will amend my motion to use the language Heather just used, that we will delegate um, to town council and the town planner to review the conditions to make sure that they are appropriate. And then I have one other question before we, actually, did someone want to second that? Yes. Can and second it. Um, the other, before the other question I had um, was just to clarify, uh, since um, our procedures were done for this, there has been a vote at the state. So I, Brian, did you quickly just wanna clarify the state's ruling on how many votes are needed? Because there's an affordable housing component in this project um, at all, not, this is obviously not a 40B, but because there's a, an affordable housing component that's more then 10 percent or the 10 percent or more the uh way that this vote can uh go um, it only needs three votes a simple majority instead of uh previously as a meaning two months ago before the order was was carried out by the governor um it would you, it would require four votes but but now it only requires three thanks brian i just wanted to let the public know so there is a variation that's taking place from our procedures. And um, that would be it if anyone is wondering um, that it does not require a vote of at least four members, it's a vote of at least three members of a five member board. Um, just for clarification, it doesn't seem to impact. But um, all right, there's a motion on the table. Uh, any other discussion? I kind of took over that one before anyone on the board had a chance. Roll call vote, please. Hannon, aye. Jarius, aye. Meister, no. Wolf, aye. Von Mearing, aye. Motion passes. 4 1 with Meister as the no. I believe our hearing is, uh, we can officially close the hearing and adjourn our meeting. Did someone want to make that motion? I move that we adjourn. Is there a second? Yes. Hannah with the second. Before we, I officially call it, um, Mina, we're all set? Uh, you should be. So I'll, I'll work with Brian um, and as needed, uh, probably you and, and Dennis, we may, you may get some wording as well from the ones that involve you and um, we will let you know where this ends up. Thank you. Thank you. Brian, all set? Yeah, I just wanted to say thanks to everybody involved. Um, this has been a very long process in a very long year. And um, I'll just say that I'm, I, I hope everyone has a wonderful evening. Thanks, Brian. And um, uh, I will call the meeting to an end at 10.04 PM. Uh, roll call vote, please. Actually, let's do the roll call vote to adjourn. Hannon, aye. Jarius, aye. Meister, aye. Wolf, aye. Unmarrying, aye. 
Motion is adjourned at 10.05 p.m. Thank you so much to everyone who participated, all the public who shared their insight and feedback and to the applicants. Um, it was a very long process, but I am very happy and pleased with the process and how it came. And the planning board is always up for feedback and um, on how to make processes better. So if you do ever have feedback, you can reach any of us at the planning board at winchester.us. So thank you so much. Thank you also to all of our consultants uh, who helped us through this process and all the staff as well, along with town council, town planner and the engineering department, especially. So thank you all to everyone and have a wonderful evening. We'll be back next Tuesday. <laughs> thank you. Bye-bye.